Hello everyone and welcome back to part 4 of our Blender 2.8 tutorial series. So today we're going to be making the candles for our object and maybe get around to texturing a bit. Um, so first off, let's drag our three um, cups by shift clicking them all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press G and then Y to just drag them off to the side. What we're going to do is we're going to add in another cylinder and we're going to make our candles. So our candles, we're going to use a subdivision surface to make them smooth, but we're also going to tweak them a bit so they look a little bit uneven and ununiform, kind of like a real candle. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, we're going to drop in a cylinder, and this is going to be very similar to the cups we did earlier, except it's not going to go down as much and like have a hollow inside, I guess. Um, so first off, let's press Control 3 on the numpad. And what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode and then turn on wireframe. And I'm going to select all of our vertices, hit Alt A, and we're going to box select the top row. So let's just hit um, G and then Z. Actually, let me turn off proportional editing by clicking that little button up there. And we're going to press G and then Z, and we're going to drag it up. And basically, we want to make that like melted interior, kind of like with our candles here. You can see it has a bit of a divot. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit E and then we're going to right click and scale it in a bit. This one we want a bit of a thicker outer edge. Then we're going to press E and then right click and then we're going to press G and then Z to drag it down. And then this one we also want to close off a bit. So I'm going to press E and then right click again, S and scale it in. But we're going to make it nice and small like that. Then we want to make a candle wick. So what I'm going to do is hit E and then Z to scale it up. And then what we're going to do is we want to cap it off. So I'm going to then press E and then right click and then Alt M at center. So it kind of looks like a candle wick, but we need to make it a bit thinner, kind of like thinning out towards the um, candle flame because it's going to be burning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some edge loops here by hitting Control R and then scrolling up a bit. And then we're going to right click to place those. Um, we're also going to close off the bottom of our candle. So let's go hit, let's hit two on the keyboard to go into edge select mode. And we're going to press alt click. And then we're going to hit E, right click, S to scale in, left click, and then E one more time, right click, and then alt M. And we're going to merge at center. So you can see there's our candle taking shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and tab out of edit mode and add a subdivision surface right off the bat. Um, so what we need to do first is fix this candle wick. So I'm going to tab back into edit mode and we're going to go into edge select and then we're going to alt click this top edge right here and we're going to turn back on proportional editing. So we want to make this taper to the top. So I'm going to press S to scale and I'm going to scroll wheel up a bit to make that influence circle a lot smaller. And we're just going to scale it in a bit, kind of like that. And then once we're comfortable with it, we're going to press G and then Z and kind of scale it up. Um, but I think this whole thing's a little too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the whole um, wick a lot smaller. So I'm going to, with, um, what we're going to do is we're going to hit one on the keyboard to go into vertex select. And we're just going to click on this little top dot right there. And we're going to start going down with our um, geometry. We're going to start um, selecting all the all the connected geometry. And one way to do that is with a certain part of your object selected, in this case that little vertex up there, I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and then hit plus on my numpad. And every time I hit plus, it's going to go further and further into our object until it selects all that geometry. So now with all of that geometry selected, I'm going to hit S and then we're going to scale that wick in quite a bit. Um, let's actually turn off subdivision surface. Um, let's try scaling it one more time and we're going to turn down this influence radius a bit. That looks about good. And now let's drag this down a bit so it isn't kind of pointing up. I think that looks pretty good. Um, if you want, you can make it a little bit bigger but I think that looks fine for our purposes. So let's turn back on subdivision surface. Um, now what I want to do is I want to add a bit of unevenness to our candle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab back into edit mode and we're going to go into face select by pressing three on the um, keyboard. And I'm going to hit alt A to deselect everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag some of these faces randomly and drag them up and down. So I'm going to just start shift clicking some of these faces. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit G and then Z. And actually, let's turn back off proportional editing. We're going to press G and then Z and drag these up. 
to about there. And then let's go over here and let's drag these faces down. Why not? Um, let's drag them up a little bit more. And then let's go over here. And then we can also drag these down. And then let's just drag these two up. So you can see how we're kind of getting that random candle shape. Um, let's turn up the subdivision surface on the right here a little bit more. Um, but it isn't as smooth as I'd like it or it isn't as sharp on the edges as I'd like it. So let's tab back into edit mode and we're gonna add an edge loop here. So we're gonna hit control R and if we click and then drag, you'll see it'll actually start taking shape of that, um, of those curves that we made, I guess. So let's do the same on the inside, control R, click and then drag down a bit. Um, and yeah, that looks good. So if we tab out of edit mode, you can see we're kind of getting that candle shape. Um, so let's do the same to the bottom, tab into edit mode, control R, drag it down a bit and then let's also do the same down here click drag control R and you can see we have a little candle so let's go to object shade smooth and there's our candle object so let's do the same thing we did with the um, candle holders over here and we're going to go control 3 into a side view I'm gonna hit um, Z and then go into wireframe and I'm gonna drag this over a bit on the Y axis and let's hit shift D to duplicate and then press Y to lock it on the Y and we're going to turn back on proportional editing and we're going to move this shape down a bit more so let's just select all these top edges we're going to press G and then Z and then move it down tab into edit mode duplicate it again drag it over tab into edit mode and then G and then Z and make a smaller candle so you can see we already have three candles and three candle holders. Um, the sizing is a bit off, so let's start scaling these a bit to fit a bit better. So I'm going, I'm going to select all of these um, objects and I'm gonna hit G and then Z to move them up a bit. And let's just turn off proportional editing while we're at it. And let's bring back that floor plane that we had before. So it looks a lot smaller than our objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale all, all of our objects down. So let's actually move them into a better position. So I'm gonna select these three um, candle holders over here, then press uh, control three, and I'm gonna tab into wireframe so we can see that faint outline of our um, floor right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just press G and then drag it over until it just about lines up here. You can see it isn't quite on the floor, so we're gonna press G and then Z while zoomed in to kind of see where it's touching. That looks good. And if we scroll out a bit, we can see our cups are now on the table. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag these candles off to the side and we wanna make them in that uh, formation that we have in my uh, reference picture here, kinda like next to each other like that. So I'm gonna press seven on the numpad to go into a top view and let's just start dragging our candles. So this is the tallest one, this is the shortest one. So let's move the middle one over here. We're gonna move our tallest candle to the back shortest one to that position and medium one to right about there, giving them a little bit of space. So if we go into a side view, you can see our candles are positioned. I think they're a bit different from the reference picture, but that's okay. Um, so now let's grab our candles over here and bring them over to our scene. And what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna scale these all down. So I'm just gonna, with them all selected, press S and then scale them down. And I'm not sure how big we want them, so let's just kind of overlap them roughly by uh, hitting G and then Z. Um, so the, those candles actually look perfectly fine if I drag them over a bit to just line up the first candle. I think we can make them a little bit bigger, but that looks about the right size. So I'm going to press G and then Z and then bring them up. Um, and But since we were scaling them in object mode, we're tweaking the object scale, and sometimes that breaks things. Um, so if you're scaling in object mode and you want it to stay that size forever, what you should do is with your object selected, we're going to press control A and you can see we can apply the current scale or the location or rotation, etc. So in this case, we're going to hit apply scale and these are now at, this is now their permanent scale. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make them level with the floor. So we're going to select our candles, shift clicking them all, and then we're going to hit control three, go back into a side view. Then we're going to go into wireframe and let's just drag these down a bit again we're just going to line them up with the floor that looks good and then i'm going to go back into a top view and i'm going to put the biggest candle in the biggest cup the medium candle in the medium cup 
and the smallest candle in the smallest cup. So now if we go back into our side view, you can see there's all of our candles. Cool. Um, we still have to add our candle wicks, but in this video, I want to talk a bit about shading. Um, so shading is a bit of a complex topic. Um, you can do, you can tweak a lot of settings, but we're going to make some really, really basic materials. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the shading tab at the top. Now this can be a bit overwhelming. There are all sorts of new like buttons and everything's moved a bit. But just remember the 3D viewport's up here and we're going to change how the object looks in this panel down here. Um, so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to select um, this big cup right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a material for all these cups and they're going to share it. So with the big cup selected, I'm going to click this little new button to make a new material and we're going to scroll out. Now this is a very big shader. There's all sorts of features and things you can tweak, but we're only going to be touching a few of them. And if you really want to study every single one of them, just Google principled BSDF or wait until I make a tutorial on it. In this case though, we're just going to be tweaking some basic features. So let's start off by making this material look like glass by tweaking the transmission shader, which will give us a see-through glass that we can play with. So nodes are really easy to use in Blender. They're really powerful too. So all we have to do is click and then drag on the transmission uh, slider right here. We're going to set it all the way to one. So you can see if I go into a rendered view by clicking this little button up here, you can kind of see through the glass. Um, I'm going to add a light real quick. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm going to add in a sun and we're going to angle it a bit. So now if I go into a rendered view, you can see we can kind of see through that glass, um, but it isn't 100% see through. So what we need to do is we need to lower the roughness and make it 100% see through. So all we have to do is click and drag the roughness all the way down. If we take another look, you can see we can see through the glass. It looks a little weird because the scene isn't lit properly, but you can see the candle inside and you can see the background. So that's very cool. Um, but it isn't 100% see-through, it's kind of darkened, so we're going to take the base color, which is the color of the glass, and we're going to set it all the way to white. So we're going to make it a bright white, and now it should be almost 100% see-through. So that's pretty cool. Now we're going to reuse this glass um, material, so we're going to click on the medium one, and what we're going to do is we're going to click this little drop-down right here, and actually let's rename it. So with our big... Um, candle holder selected we're going to go to the material tab over here um, you can see all the same um, but all the same uh, settings are over here as you see in the node editor um, but anyways we just want to change the name so if we want to rename our material we're going to double click this material 01 up here and we're going to name it glass and then hit enter and then we're going to click we're going to click this middle candle holder we're going to click the drop down make it glass click this one drop down glass and now if we go to rendered view, you can see they all look like see-through glass. So you can already see it's kind of looking pretty cool. Um, that's just the power of ray tracing, basically. Um, so anyways, that's basically our material for glass. Um, now let's make our candle material real quick. So we're going to click new. We're going to call this one candle. Um, and we're going to add another one called flame, but we won't tweak this till later. So now we have two materials, candle and flame. We're going to make sure we have candle selected, so we're only tweaking that one. So the candle material is actually very simple. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set the roughness all the way up to one so it isn't reflective because it's a waxy candle. And then we're going to actually tweak this setting called subsurface, and we're going to set that all the way up to one. And the reason for that is because candles absor or absorb a little bit of light. If you look here, if I zoom in on this reference, you can see the candle kind of captures some of that light and it kind of glows on the inside, kind of like if you put your finger up to a flashlight. It kind of does a subsurface scattering of light, so to speak. Um, so that'll be useful in making our candle look a bit more realistic. Um, so if we go into rendered view one more time, you can see it looks a lot more like colorful, but as we let it render a bit more, it looks a bit more refined. And if you you can almost see that reflective wax, or not reflective, but you can almost see that waxy candle look. So let's quickly apply that to our other candles. We're going to go candle and then candle. So that's very cool. Um, we also want to add in that um, flame material. So with the medium one selected, I'm going to hit plus. 
and then we're gonna make this empty material right here flame and then the same one for this one I'm gonna make it flame so that's very cool um, we have a little bit more time left in this video so let's actually finish the flame um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this big candle right here I'm gonna hit shift H and then we're actually gonna go back to layout view and I'm going to press period to zoom in on it and what we're gonna do is we're going to tab into edit mode and what we want to do is we want to add a little flame to the top of it so one easy way to do this is we're gonna actually add an object in edit mode so it'll be a part of the object but it will be disconnected if that makes sense so we're gonna hit 3d cursor and we're going to click on the center of our candle wick right there and now whatever object we add into the scene it will spawn right on the top of that thing right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit shift a we're going to add in a UV sphere in this case and you'll see it looks super big but all we have to do is press S scale it down a bunch and what we're gonna do is we're going to scale it up on the Z to make it look like a candle wick so I'm gonna press um, G Z to move it up a tiny bit and then we're gonna press S scale it in a tiny bit more and we're gonna press S and then Z to scale it on the Z to get that candle wick look um, I think it could be a little bit smaller so we're going to scale it in a bit more and we're going to drag it right above the candle wick. We don't want it connecting though. So you can see there's our little flame. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to assign a texture specifically to this part of our object. So while in edit mode with this part selected, um, if you accidentally deselected it, what you can do is press L and it'll select that entire separate geometry. So that's a handy uh, hotkey L. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our material tab right here and the entire object right now uses the candle material but if we go to flame and then click assign while in edit mode it'll assign the flame material just to that candle wick so if i tab out of edit mode and go to material view without the fancy um ray casting basically um, I can now tweak the color of the flame and you'll see it's a separate material to our object so that looks pretty cool um, so what we're gonna do is we can actually um, edit it right in the side panel right here so I'm gonna set it to like a nice dark um, orange reddish color um, and what I'm actually gonna do is we should kinda tweak this a bit better so I'm gonna go back into the um, shading tab and to zoom in on this I'm gonna hit tab and then press period to zoom in on the specific selected geometry and what we want to do is we want to make it a little bit emissive kind of like bright so what I'm gonna do is um, even though this is kind of unnecessary I'm going to delete the principled BSDF and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some nodes now sorry ignore that um, we're gonna add in some nodes so this will be a bit confusing but just follow along um, we're gonna hit control a and what we want is to go to the shader tab add in an emission um, node and we want to also add in a transparent shader node and then we're going to mix these two together so a flame is kind of see-through so that's where the transparent comes in but it also gives off light so that's where the emission comes in so we're going to shift a shader and we want to add a mix shader so we're going to mix these two together by a factor um, so let's drag the emission put it in the top and the translucent and put it in the bottom so we're going to set our color of our light to that nice bright orange and the strength can actually be pretty high I think I'm going to try to set it to 1000 might be too bright but we'll see um, and let's just kind of take a look so if I go into rendered view we can see that it isn't emitting too much light so maybe if we change the factor a bit in this case I think we want to change it let's see here yeah, I think the emission needs to be a lot brighter. So I'm going to try, I don't know, 20,000. Eh, maybe we should bring in some more objects to our scene. So I'm going to um, hit Alt-H to bring everything back into our scene. And let's try this one more time. I'm also going to hide the sun in my scene so we can see a bit better. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's struggling a bit. Maybe if we tweak the mix shader a bit... Oh, sorry. It's not emitting light because we have to take the mix shader and plug it into our material output. So now the candle's actually kind of too bright. So I'm going to set this to 1000 again. See how that looks. 
And you can see it's getting off like a nice glow. Maybe that's still too much. Let's try 500. And it looks like 500 might do us pretty well. Um, let's tweak the uh, shader a bit. So in this case, one is 100% transparent. Um, so we're gonna set this to 0.75. And this should give us a nice even mix of transparent and uh, glowing. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to I'm going to just duplicate this candle so we don't have to redo all that work. So an easy way to do that is select our small candles, press delete. Um, in that case, I just hit delete on my keyboard. Um, we're going to go into a top view and we're going to shift duplicate this candle and then I'm going to have to scale these down again so um, let's select this candle we'll go into side view again hit tab and actually let me turn on screencast again it looks like it got turned off there we go we're gonna hit tab go into wireframe turn on proportional editing and we're gonna select everything and now you can see we're also selecting that new candle wick. We're going to drag this down a tiny bit, turning off proportional editing. We actually don't need it. Sorry, I might have turned it back on. <laughs> um, and then let's do that with our other candle. Select all the top stuff and drag it down. So now we have our three candles. And if we go into rendered view, you can see they're all giving off light. So that's very cool. So we have a lot done for our scene so far. Um, now all we have to do is add textures to our floor and wall, add a camera to our scene, add a couple of lights, and then we are good to render our scene. So thanks for sticking around this far if you have. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to Google them or leave them down in the comments. Um, and that's about it for this video. So thanks for watching and have a good one.